crazy how we've got two movies about Elvis, two very different perspectives on Elvis in the last two years. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Priscilla. This is a film written and directed by Sofia Coppola, and it follows the life of Priscilla Presley from her first introduction to Elvis up until their relationship fell apart and she left him. I was very interested in this movie because while the Elvis film directed by Baz Lazarum had a absolutely amazing performance by Austin Butler, it did kind of just stay pretty close to what I already knew about Elvis. It was very grandiose, sure, but it didn't really do anything different for me. And so when I saw that Priscilla was coming out and it was being written by Sofia Coppola, I knew that I was going to get a little bit of a different experience. And you do with this movie. Most people would probably be wondering if this is going to be an entirely a negative movie about Elvis because there are some things that you just cannot deny. He met her when she was in grade nine, when she was a minor and he was in his 20s. Obviously, there's the saying that it was a different time. I have friends who can say that their grandparents met and basically got married before they were 19, before they were 18, in some cases even before they were 17. It happened back then. That's an undeniable fact, and I like how Sophia doesn't shy away from that. She doesn't shy away from a lot of things. The film does very much give an even footing about why she loved him and why she left him. One of the very big things you gotta talk about first off is Jacob Elrodi, uh, par apologies if I said his name wrong. His performance as Elvis was very subtle, very swagger, very good, but Kaylee Spaney, apologies if I was wrong about that. I really liked her as Priscilla because she gave a very authentic, a very soft, a very nuanced performance about this lady that I've always seen to the side, but I've never really gotten her perspective. And this is based on her book. They don't hold back from a lot of the bad. They also don't shy away from the good. That's something that I know some people went in and kind of came out a little bit confused because they didn't know how to feel. And I liked that. Yes, there were moments where you're like, Ugh. and there are also moments in their relationship where, yeah, Elvis looked like a bit of a dick. He definitely was a bit toxic in a lot of the things he did, but you also can see where the love for each other stemmed from. It wasn't just a fascination with him. It might have started as that, but it did become genuine love, but you also can see how it fell apart, and a lot of that was Elvis's doing, and just the lifestyle he lived in, and it does exclude a lot of what we got from the Elvis movie. I could say that maybe by having that movie in the background, I can know what's going on at certain points in the time because it is a bit kind of just here and there with elements that happen. There are these really cool references and pieces of memorabilia that they were able to get Jacob's version of Elvis on it. There are elements that can be interpreted in different ways because they are just spelled out. There's a moment that I had several feelings about and I could see that it changed my perspective just in how the scene was enacted. And Elvis is in his office and he calls Priscilla in and he talks to her about like, maybe I think we need to just kind of be apart from each other. He's basically saying, hey, we need to break up just after she's had the fucking kid. And then she doesn't beg him to, to stay. She doesn't beg to stay with him. She's like, okay, sure. Um, and then she walks out and it's a power move for her because he then, you can hear him begging, wait, wait, baby, come back, come back. Liked that moment because it was these subtle little drops of her independence, her resilience, her taking hold of what she wanted from the relationship because Elvis wanted to do all these things and he kind of did, I guess, what you would call the end of Greece where he told her how he, she should change her hair, what she should wear, the makeup she should have on. You kind of see where he thinks he's coming across this from a perspective of like, oh, it's better for her. I feel that that's better, so it should work, but not really letting her live. And that's what you get from the ending of the movie is, as the relationship does fall apart, you see those moments of her taking her own independence and eventually becoming herself and being her own woman. Not to say that there aren't a little bit of faults with this movie. I would say that maybe the pacing in some sections could have been better. How the movie ends is great. I like how it ends and I like what leads up to it, but I feel like there's like 5% that was on the floor that could have just given you that full explanation, that full resolution. That's probably the better word, the full resolution for it. If you wanna watch a video, let me explain where he talks about it. There's a lot of things that they left out. 
Um, Priscilla had a few affairs of her own. Well, of course, because Presley was having God knows how many affairs. The symbol that Presley had that was all over the marketing for the Baz Lazaro movie, that was made by, Pre by Priscilla. She drew that up while on a plane flight and kind of felt weird that those parts were omitted. There's a few more personal moments that I think could have been in, but the movie was already running a, like, what was it, running like a two hour runtime. It almost was at two hours, but otherwise I liked how this movie was put together. I liked the cinematography, liked the music, I liked the performances, I liked the subtle nuance to it and the kind of time capsule sort of setting of it. And from what I'm correct too, this movie wasn't made with a lot of money. I've heard the budget was not very high. And it's a Sofia Coppola movie. Like her movies sometimes don't are really big box office draws, but I'm very happy that she got to make this kind of movie. And I'm happy that we got to have this kind of story. So while there are some narrative flaws, uh, some pacing kind of critiques here and there, I still think it's a solid movie and I very much like what it's purpose was, its intention was, that it gives an equal balanced interpretation of their relationship. It's not leaning to one side or the other, it's just saying what happened. So in the end, I'm gonna give Priscilla a five out of seven. It's definitely gonna be on my honorable mentions for the year. I liked it and kind of wish, like I said, I got a little bit more. Would have liked even more from this movie. So that's something to be said. And in the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you guys saw this movie, let me know. What do you think about this one compared to the Baz Lazarus movie? Very interested to see what you guys have to say. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, guys, see y'all next time.